Nine seconds showing on the clock. The Cowboys and the Colts all tied up at 13 to 13. Morrill is kneeling. O'Brien is ready. There is the snap. The kick is up. It is long enough. It is good. A 32-yard field goal by Jimmy O'Brien. It is good. And the Baltimore Colts have just won themselves a Super Bowl if they can last out the last five seconds. The one-time roar of the crowd has now been replaced by the hum of a computer. Today in Thousand Oaks, California, Super Bowl hero Jim O'Brien is an enterprising young inventor. What's it for? You know, it's for children to be seen by their parents when they're riding in cars, so the, par the parent doesn't have to turn around and look at them. And what it does is you slide this over your rearview mirror and it sits above it, and then it, on it rotates so they can see their kids in the car seat. That's neat. Yeah, thanks. I like it. O'Brien was always a crowd pleaser, going back to his college days at the University of Cincinnati. He is the school's all-time leading point maker, and he led the nation in scoring in 1968. As a receiver, Jim also held the NCAA career record with a 22 yards per catch average. Cincinnati fans were equally delighted with another O'Brien specialty, the game-winning kick. I'd always pretended like every field goal was the last second of a championship game, not necessarily the Super Bowl, because they didn't have that when I was in high school. But even in college and, and even when I was practicing in the pros, my, last, my kicks in practice were always that last second field goal. The trend continued in the pros. In O'Brien's very first game with the Baltimore Colts, the young rookie drilled a last second field goal to beat the San Diego Chargers. He finished fourth in conference scoring and later became the last NFL athlete, other than George Blanda, to both place kick and play a regular position. Despite his versatility, O'Brien, number 80, was an inconsistent kicker, missing nearly as many as he made. And his youthful flamboyance did not always sit well with the older Colt players. I wasn't the greatest kicker, and I never pretended to be. I never told anybody I was. I did have a good season in the in whenever we needed a kick, I made it for the most part. I I never missed a, a, a kick that would have won a game. But the thing is, the Colts were a relatively conservative team. The, most of the guys were older, you know, Johnny Unitas and that era were in Baltimore at the time, and I was you know 23 and they were in their 30s. Times had changed a little, and I'd come from the turbulent 60s in college, so I guess I was just a little different and let my hair grow a little longer, and they called me Lassie. But all such differences were put aside as the Colts closed in on a world championship. In a Super Bowl renowned for its abundance of errors, it was an ill-advised Dallas pass that was picked off by Baltimore's Mike Curtis, an interception that heralded Jim O'Brien's call to glory. We were very surprised that he had even thrown it so Mike could intercept it. Uh, and at that point, we knew it was going to be a field goal. And at that time, Coach McCafferty, you know, yelled to uh, John Sandusky to get the field goal team ready. Tell, tell all the guys on the field goal team, don't get set until you tell them to set. Tell them all not to set until you tell them to set. And if they overload one side, give a man over right okay. or man over left. And I was standing on the sideline going crazy. I said, you got to do it. you got to hit it. And he was, he was so calm, it didn't make sense. He said, I'm gonna do it. You know, everything is cool. We're gonna win this game. I was begging him, please, come on, Jim. And as soon as he hit the ball, the sound of it, I knew it was gonna be good. You know, and he jumped, and I didn't even look. I knew that it was going to be good. It had probably gone 55 yards. It was my best kick of my life. And uh, I was you know, very fortunate to be able to be in that spot and, and to be successful. No matter what he invents in the future, O'Brien remains the first to patent the last second game-winning Super Bowl play.